Hey, good afternoon. Um, welcome to this online workshop on additive manufacturing, a powerful toolkit for design to production. Uh, my name is Anil Chopra. I am VP for CMR and uh, research editor at Cyber Media. Um, just before we start, please note that uh, you'll all be in mute and uh, listen only mode. In case you have any questions, then please uh, post them in the chat window because we have a dedicated uh, Q&A session towards the end uh, of uh, you know the sessions today. So just keep the questions ready and keep posting them in chat and we'll take them up in the end. Um, I think, uh, you know, additive manufacturing is a very interesting topic because, uh, you know, additive manufacturing or 3D printing, you know, has been gaining a lot of popularity because of, you know, the some of the immense benefits that it offers. Um, in fact, you know, India has uh, uh, seen increasing adoption of 3D printing technologies with, uh, you know, growth rates of over 30% year on year across materials. And, uh, you know, to quote a few more figures, in 2022, the market for additive manufacturing in India was about just a quarter of a billion dollars. But it is expected to grow at about 30% and reach 1.79 by 2030, which is about seven years from now. And of course, these are predictions, given the popularity of this, uh, you know, technology, this growth rate actually could go up also. And, uh, you know, the industry has actually evolved from being just mere prototyping technology to even, you know, complete end use production. So that's why today's workshop in which we'll have uh, some industry leaders will be sharing their expertise on, uh, you know, design for additive manufacturing, performance optimization, cost saving strategies, and some compelling, you know, sustainability uh, success stories. And, uh, you know, they'll dive into some of the evolution of this 3D uh, printing and how it's a robust manufacturing tool and, you know, shed light on, uh, its applications in, you know, concept design, functional prototyping, you know, short batch production, uh, et cetera, and cost savings, uh, which will be shared. So uh, welcome once again. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you all here uh, with us. And uh, with that, we'll start off with our first session for uh, the afternoon. And it's my pleasure to invite uh, Rajat Mehta, who's a business manager ROA, that is for India, SEA, and SPAC, for personalization and 3D printing and HP. Rajat is going to talk about, you know, additive manufacturing, how it's a powerful tool for design to production. Thanks and over to you, Rajat. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining. Uh, before we start, I would like to give you a disclaimer that we this is not a promotional or a hardware selling seminar. It is more of knowledge sharing. So you will find very little marketing slides here. It will be more on the application. Uh, just to give you a quick introduction about myself, I have been in the industry for 30 years now. And out of that, 24 years have been, uh, glorious years have been with HP. And uh, anybody who wants to connect with me can scan the QR code. It works. And it will give you coordinates to, for LinkedIn as well as my email and phone number. Uh, today's session will be uh, short and sweet. But idea is that when you are going through this session, especially if you, if you are from the IT department, please look at your whole plant and look at or visualize and, uh, and remember what conversation your production guys, your manufacturing guys have with you when they are having lunch. And you, will, you might find out that there are some of the problems which they face can be solved through additive manufacturing. With that, I will give a quick introduction and, and rush through the slides just to keep you engage and keeping the session as short as possible. Now, the agenda today would be, which I would be covering will be HP Today, which will typically be one slide. Then we will go into a little bit of what additive manufacturing is. I will talk about two verticals, which is automotive, machinery, and equipment. And people who are from medical industry and are feeling that it's not mentioned here, we are having another webinar in October on focused on medical, but you will get a lot of insight how you can leverage this technology within your manufacturing setup. We'll talk about a little bit about material and a couple one slide on the portfolio. Post that, I will hand over to our customer or, or our customer and one of the leading service provider in India, Premium, and they will talk about how they have used this technology for a particular segment and vertical. Now, this is the only slide I have on HP and basically wanted to tell you that we are a big company. You are using our products in terms of printers, PCs, uh, devices. Uh, we are a $63 billion company. 
58,000 employees globally, 250,000 channel partners, 28,000 patents in 180 countries. We are Fortune 59. Now, in all of this, uh, the slide, the comment I want to make that we invest over a billion dollar in R&D for 3D alone. One billion dollar would be turnover of the high, the most, uh, a second largest 3D printer company in the world. So that is the amount of money we spend in our R&D. And the reason why we have gained so much popularity from 2016 to now, this industry has been there for around 30 years now, but we have gained a lot of popularity because of our laser sharp focus on bringing additive to production. Okay, and we will talk about it as we go proceed. Now, most of the manufacturing industry are, are basically aware of two things, which are basically subtractive manufacturing and formative manufacturing. Just to give you a very simple example, most of your components, you can either cut, take a block of wood or a metal and you cut it to get the part or the tool out. This is called subtractive manufacturing. Formative is that you take a sheet metal and you form it into a shape or you have injection molding where you pour molten plastic uh, into a mold and it takes the shape of the mold and you extract it out. So these are the two very popular conventional manufacturing methods which are being used in most of the shop floor. In R&D, there, uh, there are people who use 3D printing, but what the aim and theme of this seminar is basically a webinar is how we can take this technology which is called additive manufacturing into other areas of your plant or product life cycle management. Okay, there are multiple technologies available here uh, for 3D printing. I'm not going into each one of them, but uh, sheet lamination was one of the oldest one. And then we had uh, FDM printers and SLS printers, multiple technologies basically. And this is where the customer usually make a mistake. Because when a sales guy comes in and they talk about 3D printing, uh, it is oversold that, oh, it can solve all the problems. Basically, if you go a slide back, you have to remember always a, this slide that this is a one additional toolkit for your engineers and production guys. It is not a replacement technology. So it's one more toolkit and we will understand how this toolkit can be used with conventional manufacturing to deliver the best output. HP has selected two technologies out of multiple technologies for plastic or polymer. We use uh, FJ, uh, MJF, which is uh, multi-jet fusion. It is basically powder-based weight technology, which means we use powder for creating the plastic components. And for metal, we have binder jetting where we use MIM process, metal injection molding uh, process, where we basically make a green part in 3D printing and then take it to sintering for metal. Today, we will be concentrating on polymer or plastic. Now, when you look at additive manufacturing, and especially for people who are non from not from production, look at or remember your discussion within the boardroom. What are your priorities, which the management is telling you, or as a, as a leader of your organization, what are the priorities are you setting? Some of those would be that we want to cut down the lead time. You want to increase the flexibility of product producing where the demand is. You want customization and personalization because that's where you can make money. You want consolidation of tools or you want design freedom. When the, just to give you a little bit on design freedom, typically when a designer start designing on a conventional manufacturing, he will be limited by a three axis machine or a five axis machine, a milling machine shaper or a lathe. And that's how he basically constrains himself before he starts designing on on a on a, a CAD software that I have this manufacturing constraint. If it's a mold, it will be parting line. So basically the part should be able to come out. Now, some of these are a thing of past when you are looking at additive manufacturing. It gives you design freedom. It helps you lightweighting and gives you material efficiency. So if you are into electrical vehicles or if you are into anything which is say a Zix fixtures uh, on the shop floor, light weighting can definitely help in ergonomics and it can also save material. And in case of EV, it helps the vehicle run that longer. Shorter lead time because you don't require, you're eliminating tooling. 3D printing is clear, uh, creating part layer by layer. 
a simple explanation will be that you have slices of apple to assemble the apple back you assemble slices together to get that apple so you are doing you are stacking 2d prints and joining them together to get the 3d print so you don't require a tooling here so you have shorter lead time you can manufacture anywhere simple example would be that aircraft fails at say delhi airport and you you don't have to ship the part you just basically digitally send the file on the printer the part will be printed and you can fix that part i'm giving a simplified explanation just to give you that you can produce where it is required and then you have a lot of customization personalization happening and you can consolidate tooling when you do all this what you achieve also is sustainability as a byproduct which is a great thing because you are able to reduce energy consumption you are able to reduce the material wastage because you are adding material and not subtracting material you have shorter lead time and you can localize manufacturing when i say localize manufacturing you can start manufacturing where the demand is okay uh, if you are from a say a shoe industry and you want uh, in insoles for example you could manufacture where your consumer is if you are a ma car manufacturer and if you need a customized car uh, say a, a dashboard with a particular name or a figurine uh, you could have a center next to your showroom and that they can print and supply so that you don't have to have centralized one of the biggest advantage of this was when we uh, when covid hit unfortunately we were able to create ventilator parts when entire supply chain was dis disrupted we were able to manufacture and supply to government of india we did around 30000 ventilator parts printing in those uh, lockdown periods because we were present in all across the country and our partners were able to print it uh, on demand now when you talk about additive manufacturing say tomorrow when you go to your office or or after this webinar uh, please make sure that you are challenging your uh, your engineers to go beyond the stage if you really want to benefit from this technology you have to get this curve or usage pattern right from development to manufacturing to service mros and aftermarket typically 3d printers get consumed here in the development phase you will have entry level printer which is sitting in your r&d office they will print some parts and and it doesn't translate to roi typically if you are looking at the entire product life cycle which is right from for develop, uh, development to manufacturing to aftermarket spare parts you are able to achieve the roi in less than a year we have a lot of cases in india where customers have been able to get the return on investment on hardware uh, in a year's time okay and this is a methodology this is uh, and while while we claim that the additive manufacturing is great you have to realize that hp is the biggest supply chain in itself it is we manufacture one printer and one pc every second and we have saved millions of dollar using our own technology in production i'll give you three examples from our own supply chain as to how we have saved money this part which you see is basically from hp latex printer now when you are using this technology for a part which was designed for conventional chances are that you don't save too much of money but when you start questioning why the design so when our engineer started questioning why we have a cnc aluminum block for this design so first question was what is it used for it is used for just a locate as a locator and a guide block and it weighed around 355 gram so one question was if it's only guiding can i make this block convert from a metal to plastic and they did that and they they passed the test at 80 gram so you from 355 grams all the way to 80 grams the next question was do we need a complete solid plastic can i hollow this out and they were able to bring down the weight to 55 grams and then they said okay can i use a software like autodesk or a siemens plm or any other software like katia and do generative design and they did a generative design topology optimization and they got 23 grams now for people who don't know what generative design is visualize a tree the way branches come out of the tree does not have a equation it's a nature's beauty and some of that has been captured by the software and they are able to do a design like this so from 355 grams in aluminum cnc machine we are able to get a 23 gram part in on a 3d printing using a generative design which cannot be conventionally manufactured resulting in 50% cost reduction 
uh, 93% of weight reduction, 95% of carbon footprint reduction. This is how you start getting advantage of 3D printing. The engineers have to really question a uh, conventionally designed part. Why is it designed? Can I do it better? This is another example from our laser uh, drill extraction shoe. This was a MOQ or a, there was basically 13 parts and they were all CNC machine. Three to five days it was required. And if this part needed to be replaced, the entire laser drilling machine uh, line used to get stopped for basically we used to use this part for a laser drilling machine for our laser print heads. And this was converted into a consolidated. So we consolidated all these 13 parts into one part, make, reducing the weight to 52 grams, um, uh, tacked to one to two days from three to five days, from $450 to $18. And this research was done in Singapore and we, were, we saved a lot of money and it was basically a weight reduction of 90% and a, a cost reduction of 95%. So these are some of the examples which I wanted to show. This is another example from our own supply chain, which is an air duct, which was again, assembly of multiple components. We were able to consolidate into one part and then use generative design to modify this part. And we were able to do a cost reduction of 34.3% and a flow improvement of 23.3%. Now, what you have to visualize is that this is live examples of the products you use from HP coming with 3D printed parts and HP has saved a lot of money. Now we get into the automotive world. And when we look at automotive, there are quite a number of challenges. I'm simplifying it on five challenges, which is very complex supply chain. Ask anybody from Bajaj Auto or Tata Motors, how complex their supply chain is. The molds require a long lead time. Aftermarket supplies can be challenging because consumers are demanding more designs and they have to come with more iterations and more variants very, very quickly. Prototyping is expensive and design iteration or improvements take, are expensive too. What 3D printing can do for, for such problems is basically give design freedom where you can consolidate, you can do light weighting, uh, you can do tool consolidation, you can have cost reduction, both at the prototyping stage, also for short batch production and time to market is basically reduced. Now, this is not for, you are not building all the components of a car or a scooter uh, on, a, on a 3D printer, but you are choosing which parts are best candidate for injection molding, which are the best candidate for additive manufacturing. So design for additive manufacturing is important topic where you look at, uh, can I reduce the weight? Can I reduce uh, or can I consolidate my assembly? And can I use my 3D printing technology to get those parts out? And we have seen successes across the world, right? From packaging, sorting and transportation application, from tooling, uh, even the robotics. So basically if you're picking up glass, uh, windshield glass or, a, or a mirrors in, the, in, the, in your factory uh, using robotic arm, you can convert those robotic arm and, and arms from a metal to a polymer and they, they are lighter. Hence, the load on the servo motor is much, much lesser. The complete dashboard can be joined and printed for visual prototyping. This is a great application where now uh, companies are evaluating that on the seats, can we use a, a lattice structure polymer rather than using a foam? You will ask, what is the benefit? The benefit is that this, these absorbs energy much easier in case of unfortunate crash. These will absorb energy much quickly. And also when, when you have ventilated seats in your vehicle, a structure like this allows a good airflow. Okay, and I'll give you some examples more as you proceed to personalize part where you could have, a, a, like Indians have a habit of writing their beloved name or a God name on the car part. So if you have interior part and you need a personalization or a texture, you can do that. And then you have the great application where you, want to have short run and you don't want to maintain any tool, you could actually do a 3D print. This is apart from BMW. And then you have aftermarket where you have end of life situation and you don't want to keep the tool with you and you just want to print on demand. This is apart from JLR. So all these companies names are written in grayed out letters, uh, BASF, uh, SEATC8, uh, BMW, JLR. So these are live examples. 
This is one example, as I said, from uh, Oshlas, and they basically have now complete prototype seats which are available where you have a 3D printed lattice structure cushions here, which, which you can see, which provide a better ergonomics and better performance for the cars. And we feel that this will come in mainstream cars moving forward because we have a great range of material now, which supports a better seating comfort and ergonomics. This is another example uh, from Exotel where you could have two different material and they use joining techniques or they do laser welding. So these parts are 3D printed and then laser welded with an insert of a different material. So this is another, another example where 3D printing uh, gives you the design freedom, gives cost saving. And rem remember that for these parts, you don't require any tools. They are directly printed. So you are saving on the tooling cost. You are saving on the spare parts because you don't have to stock any spare parts. You don't have to stock the tools for printing the spare parts. It's all done by the printer. Zigs and fixture, people who are from manufacturing background, if you have to create this kind of fixture with a compound angles, it takes a lot of CMM work, coordinate measuring machine uh, to basically give you the block dimension, the angles, and then you have to use CNC machining to create that. But if your application is only for checking this thing, you could straight away print this entire thing in one go on a 3D printer and get a receiving gauge very, very quickly saves time, it is light to carry. Even if it breaks on the shop floor, you just print another one and, and you are ready to go. This is another example of basically end of arm tool, which is used for basically extracting this uh, molded part from the mold. So if you have a light weighted part, it, the chances of damaging the, the main part, which is molded is very, very less. So what you see, is this is a good example where in a conventional manufacturing, still on a tool room or on a shop floor, you are able to use 3D printed end of arm. So it's not only the parts which you are printing, you're also printing the tool or end of the arm. And this can save a lot of cost. Like when we were in the Ford Motor Company, when they were in India, we were able to uh, remove the metal cradles which they used to carry the engine uh, around uh, with a 3D printed uh, uh, rail arm. And uh, the person who did it, uh, fortunately, is on the call and he did it for us. Uh, and uh, we were able to save a lot of costs for Ford Motor Company in India when they had a plant in Chennai. A lot of this limited edition have started coming in. You could have a Diwali edition of a Bajaj scooter or, or, or a motorcycle, or you could have a Mahindra and Mahindra special edition. And you could want to customize the keychain and, and all the components which go in. Like I drive, very proudly drive a Tata Motors Safari and I have a Kaziranga edition and I have a Rhino and I have Rhino imprints all, all in the body and all on the car, car interiors. And all these can, can be very easily 3D printed, gives you additional margins because you are, you are able to charge a premium from customer for that customization, yet you are not investing in tooling and you are able to create this key, uh, key fogs uh, on 3D printer. And, and imagine if there is a replacement required, you don't need to worry. You can go to the nearest 3D printer and print it and supply it to the service station. We move into the machine equipment and basically, again, visualize your shop floor. And when you visualize your shop floor, there are multiple applications within the shop floor automation area which can benefit from 3D printing. For example, if you look at this, this component, a lot of these components are 3D printed. The, the challenge is that there is no, you cannot have a large quantity manufacturing. You cannot invest in tooling. You need reduced time when, you, when there is a failure. A 3D printer actually helps you achieve all that and there's a cost reduction there. This is a can twister mechanism, which is again 3D printed. Conventionally, if you have to manufacture, you will have to bend these pipes on a CNC bending machine, combine them together, weld it to get this kind of structure. In 3D printer, you can print this whole thing in one piece. Again, a lot of these metal components in, a, in an assembly can be converted into polymer and hence giving a good sustainability benefit. And again, we have examples right from processing, packaging machinery industry, agriculture machinery, textile machinery, woodworking, pharmaceuticals, and other, like this example, which you see here, the one in red, 
This is from uh, L'Oreal. What you see here is from Kosh. So wide range of industry uh, from right from arranging from packaging machinery all the way to pharmaceutical and cosmetic. You have a lot of application. This is one example. So when you see these pipes, these two pipes, these are basically used for vacuum. Uh, these are vacuum and, and liquid. And these smaller pipes, which you see here, are basically regulators for pressure. Now, there is no way you can manufacture this part on a conventional manufacturing in one piece. However, on a 3D printer, you can print this whole part in one go. What you have achieved here is you have consolidated a very complex bill of material into one single part. And remember, if this part fails, you just have to print it again. And it's that fast. So you, the complexity in 3D printers is actually a ROI for 3D printer. The more complex is the geometry, the easier you get the ROI. This is another example I showed you earlier. This is basically to twist the cans and align them in a proper manner. Again, this is a very complex part for a conventional manufacturing. But if you use 3D printer, you can reap the benefit very, very easily. This is for anybody from ball bearing industry. This, this is another good example where you could have the inserts of the ball bearing uh, 3D printed and you can have split, split bearings to get better performance and better load performances. What we are talking today is of engineering grade production ready uh, printer. So these are all materials which are available. We have polyamide 12, polyamide 11, polypropylene, PA12 glass bead, PA12 white, which are rigid material. If you want flexible material, we have TPU, TPA, uh, which are listed here as material. We have a lot of welding. Like the question you would have that if my part is larger, can I join the parts? Yes, you can join the parts by, by creating fits or you can have threads, which you can see here. You can have metal insert threads so that you can tighten it properly. You can have snap fits. You can use adhesive bonding and you can also have ultrasonic laser welding uh, for joining the parts. You can also have multiple kinds of finish. This is a raw part. You could have finish like this where you basically have a tube lighting effect and you color the part properly. Or you can have texturing for personalization, whether it's for a car, whether it's for a cell phone, whether it's for a packaging industry, uh, outside box, but you can have various textures. The materials require certification. Without certification, you don't proceed further in manufacturing. So these materials are certified. And if you require a particular certification, we can work with you as a part of professional service to get you certif uh, certified parts out. And also because you require a lot of test, these materials are tested for various emissions, skin contact, air tightness, fuel tightness, and fuel resistance. All these tests are available, and you can contact uh, your sales team to get those answers. And this is the last slide. Basically, this is our portfolio. I'm not going to spend, as I promised. We are not in today to sell you a printer. What we want you to do is basically help us reach out to the team which is which would you feel would benefit from additive manufacturing, help you save costs, uh, make your EVs run faster, have a better packaging for your pharmaceutical, have better orthotics prosthetics, which we will cover in the October seminar again. Uh, this is one of the best production platforms we have. We have service bureaus across country. So if you don't want to buy a printer, but you want the services, we have customers like Premium who will be able to provide you with the services. So you, we are not asking you to invest in the printer, but we are asking you to invest in the technology by using the technology. And we want to work with you hand in gloves so that you can adopt this technology along with the conventional manufacturing you're using and bring additive manufacturing benefit to your shop floor. This is my last slide before I introduce Premium. Again, the QR code works. If you want to connect on LinkedIn, via email or phone number, please do that. And it is, a, it is a great topic to discuss. There are a lot of developments happening on daily basis. What you see on this slide is actually our digital manufacturing factory. This factory is available for visit for all the customers who are going visiting Barcelona. We have a smaller factory in Singapore. Our 3D printers and a lot of components of other, uh, other printers and devices are manufactured by HP in this plant. 
So this is our manufacturing plant. This is how additive manufacturing plant looks like. But you don't have to invest here. We have enough capacity with our customers who are partners or service bureaus who can start your journey in additive manufacturing. With that, I would like to introduce Premium. Premium are leading service bureau and design house based out of Chennai. Uh, we have Franklin today with us, who is a, is a chief operating manager for uh, uh, Premium. And he will discuss a very interesting application today. You will benefit listening to him. Again, the qu request you, I have for you is go back to your coffee talk, the lunch talk, the board meetings, and, and, and remember the challenges your production supply chain people were talking. If you're from IT, you will definitely be our question that can you solve this problem? Some of this answer we are able to give you today. Some of the answer we will request you to engage, help us engage with your team so that we can provide the answers and we can provide guide them to a right service bureau where they can start leveraging this technology. And once they achieve the ROI, obviously we can lease the printers. We don't have to buy it. We can lease the printers to you and you can use it in-house. With that, Franklin, thank you for taking out the time and I will stop sharing so that you can share. Yeah. So thank you so much, uh, Rajatji, for this uh, wonderful introduction. And you are nicely covered up on the many applications. So before that, my name is Franklin and the business head for the Premium Solutions Private Limited. Today, the topic, what uh, Mr. Rajat has given to us is uh, design to production. Uh, seriously, the word he used that uh, the production series mission. So we really experience the technology of multi-jet fusion is a uh, is a production series machine. So we have few, uh, I mean, two case studies, which we want to show you to you as a batch production or a small volume requirement, which is needed for the day. One minute. Yeah. So we <clears throat> today, we, everybody talks about drone. Drone are no longer just a gadget, but has evolved into powerful tools with a wide range of applications. Earlier, people used to take only for the video recording, game playing, those kind of things. Today, it is being used in the aerial prescriptive mobility and the access, remote operational, which is used for civil as well as for the, uh, the military applications. And many of the times, the drone is being used in the data collection capability for the inspection. If you take uh, during the COVID time, Many of the aerospace components is being uh, done the inspection through the drones for the larger uh, systems or aircrafts being done on those kind of a collection. So drone is playing a major part of the role, not just a gadget in today's environment. And there are many challenges in making drones because there are many companies are coming up uh, in this industry. Many startups are coming up in this industry. So each company having its own challenge, how to differentiate them with respect because drone needs to have a certain frequency to operate. Also drone will have some kind of a uh, vibration depending upon the electric motor or it is a propulsion motor, you have different kind of vibration. So, so it demands for a complex geometry uh, depending upon the application, whether it is used for carrying a material, whether carrying for a data collection, or whether for the survey. So it has a different application. So if a structure, it should be a lightweight. However, I'm just stopping the video because of the bandwidth issue. So the clarity will be there. Yeah. Now, the lightweight is the biggest concern in the drone industry because how much the lesser the weight the drone can fly the range little bit extra if it is a 30 minute drive if your weight is less then it can go to 40 minutes 45 minutes so that's the key uh, challenge what drone manufacturer has it should be light enough to take up the payload and it should be a customized one it cannot be a standard operating kind of a product where you get an assemble those are the drones available. Those are toy drones or those are very small application drones. Today, whatever we are going to talk is on the uh, functional application, which has been running in the industry for all those kind of things, which I said. Now, traditional manufacturing, whether I can able to manufacture these kind of drones 
traditionally uh, doing that. But the concern is traditional manufacturing having the concern in manufacturing the complex geometry, internal structure. If you have an intricate design, there are some tooling we need to invest. Also, the tooling lead time and the cost is very high. Moreover, weight optimization, as uh, Rajaji was talking about how the 355 gram has been come down to 23 gram, those are not possible in the traditional manufacturing thing. And design iteration, today I develop a, a design and make for a tooling industry with a three months waiting period. Then if the testing validation fails, then again, you need to go for a second set of design iteration. And also assembly complexity, where he was talking about seven component has been converted into one component, whereas in 3D printing, you can able to consolidate everything and you can able to manufacture as a one component. So these are the challenges which we uh, face in traditional manufacturing with respect to the drone industry. Now, transforming the technology of drone manufacturing using the MGF technology, so we could like to take a first case study, which is we, we supported a drone company starting from the design, then design iteration, and then we went for a serious production of them. The, the picture, what you see on the right side of it is, it is being used for the, the surveillance application as well as for the data observation purpose. <coughs> when a customer came to us, it was designed for the injection molding component. The weight of a component was around 400 grams. Then we started looking into the, the, the structures, where and all we can able to reduce the thickness, where and all we can able to optimize the weight. Like that, we have done the design iteration of both the main components of top and bottom enclosures. We can able to reduce the weight to 200 grams. So this is a design optimization, which we have done, which is we are capable of doing it in our in-house. So which is a 50% of the weight reduction we have done. And customer is so happy about it so that he can increase the payload in the camera or he can increase the payload in the carrying things. Now, what other things we have done? Because when we reduce the weight, something we will compromise. The first thing we compromise on the wall thickness. When we started working with the customer, he came up with a X mm wall thickness. And then we started working minus 2X or uh, minus 2.5X wall thickness so that we can able to print into 0.8 mm wall thickness also we can able to print in multi-jet fusion technology so we designed it and then we validated it what it is happening then we find that there are some uh, warpages that happen so what we did on the right side of the picture <coughs> sorry we added the rib portion of it so that it can increase the strength as well as it avoids the warpages of the particular area See, these kind of things, if you want to incorporate in the injection molding, there is a time taking of the tool fabrication as well as you need to validate the tool. It will take minimum four months time for an injection molding people to do that. For us, we just change design iteration and just printed in, uh, in 48 hours time and we given to customer for the validation. Within a week's time, we are given a, a complete drone. And also when we are doing a design uh, part of it, we take care of the rib thickness also the rib height we have taken care of it because if you increase the rib height it should not touch upon the internal electronic component which is going to be loaded on that so very carefully we work with the customer what kind of thing we need to do to make sure that the component weight is coming down also it is stable also it is a uh, very important on getting a strength part of it so in the internal improvement structure we have done this uh, improvement and then we started looking how other ways we can able to reduce. So we started, uh, started looking on the non-critical regions, which has been given only for the supports to hang around that. So where we started giving on the perforations on those areas so that we can able to get the same strength, but we can reduce the material and also it is a lightweight material kind of a thing. So this is the second improvement we have done on the drone design. Third. Once you finish what uh, Mr. Rajat was talking about, you can go for a, a raw finish, you can go for a, a painted finish, or you can also go for a customized with a knurling effect. But this customer is very specific that he want to have the aesthetic part of it also needs to be done. So what we did as printed condition, after we did the basic uh, weight blasting application, what is the weight? Then we added a matte finish kind of a thing. Then we did the weight study. And after we painted on the above surface, we did the weight study. 
each one increases by 10 to 15 grams of weight. So we optimized out of these three options, which one will fit for the customer requirement. And we made changes according to the process and we finalized the matte finish requirement for them. Okay, now matte finish is fine. Now, what kind of uh, environmental test to be done to perform the, because the drone is going to fly in the abnormal condition. I'll be covering in the environmental test in a separate page. Now, drone has to be get assembled. So there, what, what other options we have? As uh, <clears throat> Rajatji was talking about snap fit, bonding, screws and threads. So we choose to go with the three types of uh, in, uh, the joints. One is the helical insert, then brass insert, or whether we can go for a nut and bolt assembly for this drone. We tried with the M2, M3 nuts and M4 nuts, and also we checked on the torque requirement, which is required for helicoil or the brass. Unfortunately, for that particular application, we are not able to maintain the consistency of the torque or the consistency of the tightness. So what we decided better we'll go with the nut and bolt assembly for this particular application. And we did the <clears throat> trial and it was very successful. Then drone needs to be fly in a different environment. And the drone is being tested in the IP66. That is the water resistant level of the drone. If it rains, if it goes for the dusty environment, how good about it is that? So since we use the certified material of HP PA12 material, we can able to uh, get that IP66 certificate and also they tested the relative humidity of a, of, a, of a drone and it is well within the range what we were expected and we got the certification and the drone is being tested <coughs> in the Himalayas with a minus degree and also it has been tested in the Rajasthan with 45 degree to 47 degree because it has to withstand also it has to ventilate all those uh, the temperature requirement the product withstands the entire uh, qualification requirement of we call it as the end user acceptance test it has pro magnetic compliance test and also it has passed and it is went on to the market once we proved the proto validation is done we went for the commercial series production of around uh, 150 drones we printed and we are given to the market. See the situation if a drone manufacturer has to develop a component within a period of say six months time for the tooling design iteration itself it takes six months time. For in this particular case we have started designing then design iteration went for proto went for validation and everything we completed in four months time including the 150 drones we have delivered to the market. In today's scenario, drone has to be delivered on time or else you have multiple vendors to develop a drone and give it to the market. So such a way that the 3D printing is helping the industry to go for a serious production in such a short notice using HP's multi-jet fusion technology. That's why he say that design to production, it supports the most of the industry to go for a batch production or a series of production with a limited edition. Now I have a case study too. <clears throat> this case study is more about a large scale functional prototype requirement. This is one of the off highway dashboard which we developed for an Indian customer, which we are not able to <clears throat> fit it in the print bed size. So what we did, we cut the parts into different sections where you need a skilled and also technicality where exactly the part need to cut and where exactly you need to go forward on the the war pages where it will happen. So this is a little tricky area when we go for a larger component and we and also the skill set is required how to join. So there are welding process, adhesive process, nutting process, but we went for the adhesive process to take care of it. And moreover, different part printed in a different orientation, different build, you need to have a control on the war page system. So accordingly, you play around on the thickness, which area you need to give thickness, which area you need to give the rib. So those kind of the capabilities where premium can give an, uh, given a value for you to go for your functional prototypes. See, this is the one of the component we made it for the off highway vehicle. That's a component what you saw as a breakdown component. Now we have made it as a one single component and it has been tested for the functional. And it has gone for the second iteration with a different design tool. 
Now, such making such a large injection molding will take minimum six months for tool making, and the cost of a tool will come to around 12 to 15 lakh rupee. Whereas our customer able to make this component in 15 days, the much much lesser price. And he can able to prove a beta production series, then he will go for an injection molding. So this is a case study too, where we supported on the functional requirement of the uh, uh, prototyping. So finally, in a nutshell, what we want to try to say is that the benefit of 3D printing, that is especially using a MGF technology, you can go for a very rapid functional prototype with your customized components, complex structures, <coughs> also your lightweight, which is required for your design, you can able to do it in 3D printing. As Mr. Rajat said that definitely subtractive technology or a formative technology is not going to replace with the 3D printing. That will be there for the respective parts application. But this will have a little bit advantage on the consolidation of the component or you want to go for a rapid uh, first advantage mover, go to the market. Those are the things it will give you. Moreover, the reduction of material waste is the need of the day. When uh, HP starts the presentation, they said the sustainability of this thing. They're reducing the weight of a material, which gives the saving the environmental carbon footprint reduction is more important. So in a nutshell, what we want to say is that using the MGF technology, we can able to go to market at a very speed. And the part is very precise, cost effective, sustainable, and it is quality assurance. If you see whatever the components we made it, it has cleared all the requirements which is needed for the drone industry. The similarly, which is needed for the automotive application, we have the, the material, we have the process to be established. <laughs> Not at the least, I just take a few minutes to introduce about our company. It's your doorstep to the world of additive manufacturing. Our facility is in Chennai. And we are basically a manufacturing company where we have a sheet metal fabrication capability for last 40 years. <clears throat> And we started this additive manufacturing in 2019. We are a first company who are into the industrial grade 3D printing application printers we have. I'm emphasizing the industrial grade 3D printers. In the HP's term, a production series 3D printers, both metal as well as the polymer, we are the one we have. And we have the fleet of machines, totally six technology we have in our facility, two are in metal and four are in thermoplastics. But happy to say that the performance of HP, we had only one machine for the PA12 material. Just one and a half months before, 45 days before, we have added the second machine for the polypropylene and TPU material. We are the first company in India has the HP's the entire portfolio of the material, whether it is a PA12 or you want a polypropylene or you want a TPU, we can able to service the requirement for your need. At the last, we work for healthcare, aerospace, and the engineering business. And we are the first company to have the certification for the 3D printing business, both on aerospace as well as on the healthcare, this thing. This is a quick view about our facility. This is one of the metal machine and more view of our HP machine, other printers. So finally, I would like to conclude saying that it's a premium is your doorstep to the world of additive manufacturing using the HP technology. Thank you so much. Thanks, Franklin. Uh, thanks for that uh, really nice presentation. Um, truly, uh, you know, some really great things have come out. And Rajat, I think uh, kind of it, both the sessions kind of really mesh together really well. You gave really good overview and uh, I think uh, Franklin gave some real life use cases. Uh, so very nice. Uh, I think it's time for a QA. and a and uh, I think one thing we can do, Rajat, I think I noticed uh, some people had asked questions and you had been answering them in between. So maybe what we can do is for the benefit of everyone, uh, just at least answer those, uh, read out the answers that the somebody had raised for the benefit of the others so that while you answer those, maybe people will have other questions to ask. Yeah, so the questions which were primarily asked was on difference in the technology. And I will want to highlight that uh, we are talking about production technology and I will not go to extent of bashing any technology because being a technologist, I always believe that every technology has an application and we need to work together to understand what technology in additive manufacturing is required. However, HP technology today is able to give you isotropic part, which means that on X, Y, and Z direction, the strength is the same. 
it is very close or better than injection molding and hence customers use our parts directly into the machines of production rather than creating a prototype and then creating tooling for that. So that's a major, major difference in terms of how we manufacture. We manufacture using powder and because we are using powder technology, we don't need any support. So people who are used to using FDM printers and others, you will design the part positioning and also support. In HP technology, you don't require support because the powder itself is a support. We do not use laser because laser leads to spattering and the reusability of powder is very less, compromising the sustainability uh, thing. So we basically use infrared light and we are able to use, reuse 80% of the powder in PA12 and almost 100% of the powder in polypropyl. And so we use recycle the powder very, very well, keeping the cost per part down. So these are the basic essence of the question being a bit, which were asked. I answered on the fly because while listening to Franklin, I was just typing out the answer. Yeah, thanks. I think, uh, uh, thanks for sharing that, Rajat. So in case anybody has any other question, why don't you just post it in the chat window? We'll wait for maybe a minute. Uh, I while, hope we are, while we are waiting for the question, I want for the all the part benefit of the participants, we have manufacturing centers or we call that service providers all across India. Premium is one of the leaders uh, in there. So please reach out to us if you need any kind of work in terms of functional prototypes, uh, short bat manufacturing, tooling, uh, and we will be, uh, will be able to support it through our service bureau. Uh, these have multiple technologies, so you are not buying a technology and getting stuck with it. You use this technology over and over again before you take a decision which technology is best suited. We also have training programs from our consulting arm. So even if you don't have the printer, we can start training your people for design for additive manufacturing, how to select part for additive manufacturing. And these are all trainings which are available from HP and can be done remotely or on site. So before you actually invest a, uh, even a dollar on a hardware for additive manufacturing, we request you to avail these trainings, use our service bureau. A lot of customers have made mistakes of buying printers on because the sales guy was overselling the printer and they have not been able to get the ROI. The idea here is that not sell the printer, but make this technology popular so that you can benefit for the power this technology brings in. And uh, again, once again, people who have uh, who are who have scanned the QR code can connect with me and Franklin on LinkedIn, or you can just search for my name and Franklin's name. We are both very regular posting relevant information on additive manufacturing on 3D printing and, and industry 4.0. The other thing is we also have a leasing service. So you do not have to worry about doing capital investment. We can lease the printer. We can lease the third-party software to you. We can lease all the post-processing equipment which is required. So we take care of the customer entire journey. And we have very strong partnership across the globe with large automotive manufacturing, pharmaceutical uh, companies. Uh, next seminar will open some doors as to how we do it for orthotics, prosthetics, and medical equipment. And we welcome everybody to join in that webinar too. Thanks, Rajat. Uh, thanks, Franklin, for you know the really great insightful sessions. I'm sure people found it useful because I saw those questions being asked while the sessions were happening. Franklin has uh, shared his uh, contact details in the chat window. And uh, so you can please take them from there. I noticed that there's, uh, you know, uh, no further questions have come, but uh, in case any of you do have any questions, then please reach out to us, send us the questions and we'll make sure that, you know, we, we share them with uh, Rajat and Franklin and uh, you, so that you can get the right response. So this, this webinar, one more point, this webinar is recorded. So you will get a recording, which you can share the links with all the members in your organization. Uh, and, and it will solve our, our essence of, or the ethos of, around this webinar is to educate the country on on printing and increase the usage of printing as a mainstream uh, production tool. China is way ahead, as you know, and we always believe that we can surpass China and also rest of the world by using new technologies. And this is our initiative from HP and our partners like Premium to make this technology accessible, usable, and at a, at a very attractive price 
uh, because you're not paying for the hardware, you're just paying for the service. So over to you. Yeah, I think, uh, thanks, uh, Rajat. Uh, I uh, noticed people are, uh, you know, appreciating it. So I, I uh, thank all the attendees. Uh, I hope you all found it useful. Uh, and like I said, again, please do write back to us. Um, okay, great. So great, I think when you uh, leave the meeting, uh, I think you'll get a link uh, with the feedback form. So I appreciate if you could just fill that up and send it back to us. Uh, thanks once again, Rajat. Thanks again, uh, Franklin, for the really insightful sessions. And uh, we look forward to, you know, the attendees writing back to us and sharing their feedback. So thanks, everyone. Have a Thank great you. day. Bye.